everybody, my name's Mrs. B and I'm an art teacher. Now, as an art teacher, it's very important for me to teach students all about the art elements. Now, the art elements are the things that artists put into their artworks to make them interesting or unique. Now, there are a lot of different art elements, but today we're going to have a really close look at the art elements of line, colour, texture and shape. And we're going to put them together in our very own flower kind of artwork. art elements so that you understand them in order to create your own artwork. So come with me and let's do some art element learning and creating. The first thing you'll need for this task is a piece of paper. I'm using some craft card from Zart Art, however you can just use a normal white piece of paper. I'm working on an A3 size. The other things you'll need is a grey lead to draw with, you'll need a sharpie or some sort of fine liner for some darker details and I've written here whatever you have. This is a fantastic task that you can adapt with whatever you have at home. That means you could use textures if you have them, watercolours, I'll be using some really cool colour sticks which is almost like paint in a pen. Uh, they're from Zart Art as well but you literally can adapt this to whatever you have at home. So let's get started. All right, wonderful people. So for today, we are going to create a beautiful artwork based around four art elements. We're gonna chat about the art elements first so we understand them and then put them into a beautiful artwork. So I'm gonna use a piece of Zart Art Craft Card today. You could just use a piece of A3 white paper if you prefer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually fold the paper in half like this and then in half again like this this is going to section your piece of paper into four quarters four equal sides now before I do any artwork on the front let's have a chat about the art elements on the back so there are more than four art elements but today we're going to talk about line shape texture and color. Now the way I explain art elements to the students that I teach, it's like if I were a chef and if I wanted to make a cake, I'd need to put in a whole bunch of ingredients like eggs, flour, sugar, different things into my bowl, mix it all together and hopefully in the end, turn out to have a really yummy cake. Just like a chef puts ingredients into a meal, an artist might put art elements in to create an artwork. So I'm gonna turn my artwork back over. And the first thing I'm going to do is get something, a circle here. I've got some masking tape, you might use a bowl, something circular that I'm gonna trace around. I've put my circle right in the middle of my page and I'm using a permanent marker first of all. You could use a pencil however if you felt more comfortable starting with a pencil. Now, a circle could become so many different things. It could become a person, it could become a snowman, it could become a sun, it could become a flower. Today, we're going to be creating an artwork that is a flower. So I'm gonna use this circle here and then do the petals all the way around. Now, as I said, you could draw this with a pencil first, but I'm just gonna go straight ahead and draw petals like this, nice big bold shapes. If you're wanting to do a sun, you might just choose to draw straight lines coming out from the circle all the way to the edge of the paper like this, it would be a similar kind of effect. So try to be as neat as you can. Now you can see using a permanent marker really makes my lines stand out nice and boldly. So for each of these quarters, each of these sections, I'm gonna explore an art element for each. 
So let's first talk about the art element of line. It's amazing, line is one of the most important ones, I really think, because you really can't make an artwork without a line. Whether the line is straight, whether it's wobbly like this, whether it's swirly like this, lines have expression. Sometimes they can even have emotion, like I might be angry if I use zigzags. Lines can even join together to create shapes. A shape is just a closed loop line like this. You can use shape in this way, cross hatching, to create tone or value within an artwork, creating dark areas. Line is super important and the amount of lines is continuous. It goes on and on and on. You could just draw different lines forever and ever. A line is literally just a mark. And Paul Klee once said, that a drawing is just a line taking a walk. So let's have a go at creating a section just here with lots of different lines. Now, as I said, you can do this task using whatever you have at home. So if all you have at home is some colored textures, if all you have at home is a pen, you might choose to just explore within this box here, all the different lines that you can think of. So maybe you could even use each of these petals as a way of exploring different types of line. Now this is probably going to be the most time consuming and detailed of the boxes, but it does depend on how much effort you wanna show. You can see here I'm doing some different size zigzags with a thin sort of fine liner marker here. And hopefully what you can notice is how changing the lines, for example, if I do some wobbly lines here, it really changes the style of the artwork. Sometimes it changes the type of mood of the artwork as well. So spend some time now creating some detailed, interesting decorative lines in each of the sections, including a quarter of this circle here. And if you want to go even further, some lines in the background as well. Maybe if you're in a class today, you can start to come up with a whole bunch of adjectives or descriptive words for the type of lines that you're using. For example, I'm going over these, some of these triangles here to create my lines in a more thick or bold way. You can see that they're different to the ones next to it. Now the effort that you put in with this part of the task is really, really important. You know, what you put in is what you get out of this. So if you were just to sort of say, okay, there are some circles, I'm done. And you don't put in the care and time that's necessary, your artwork will reflect that. And it might not be something that you're particularly proud of if you're not going in and really taking your time. It's an opportunity to add detail. It's an opportunity to show creativity. You can see I'm doing some really small, neat lines here. Lines that are creating shapes. And my messy ones, if, if I've made a mistake, I might take that as an opportunity to try to turn my mistake into a masterpiece. So I might try to pretend or make a way to make it look like that it was meant to be there in the first place hide my mistake in a way just like this so hopefully no one notices it was a mistake it's a creative thinking kind of challenge but it does take effort it does take time it does take commitment to the task but I think you'll be proud of the outcome if you do So notice I've had to split this petal in half because I'm only decorating this quarter of my page. This part here, this part, rest of the petal is gonna become a different art element that I'll focus on there. Now part of doing an artwork that shows detail is thinking about what can I add? 
something I mention for my students quite a bit when I'm teaching. For example, I've drawn some lines here, but if I think to myself, well, what can I add? Maybe I might go back in and add some patterns or details to these sections here to fill each space with something interesting so that the viewer, anyone looking at my artwork, has a lot to notice, has a lot to look at and moves their eye around the page because of all the detail that's in it. You can continue on with your black if you prefer, but I am still exploring lines. So no matter what I do in the back here, I am going to still create interesting line patterns, just this time with some color. Yeah, I think I'm done with the line section. All right, I'm gonna flip over again, and this time we're gonna have a chat about color. Now color is my favorite of all the art elements because I just think we should live our lives in color and be as colorful as possible. But color doesn't just mean use every color. It means having a think about how colors work together and how colors actually have relationships. For example, if you use these three colors together, they make us think of things that are warm, like fire and the sun. That's why they're called warm colors. Alternatively, if you use these colors together, they're called cool colors. And they make us think of things that are cold, like a forest or an ocean. You could also choose to use the primary colors together. These are the brightest, most basic of all the colors. And they're actually the starting colors. Every other color is made using just these three basic colors. So colors actually work together and have relationships. You can use harmonious colors. They are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So this is our very basic color wheel with six colors in it. We've got the three primary colors and then the three secondary colors that they mix to when that they make when they mix together. Now colors that are next to each other, like orange and yellow, for example, they're called harmonious colors. Any colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, like blue and orange, they're called complementary or contrasting colors. And they're also another color relationship. So maybe after having a chat and having a think about colors and how they work together, you could choose a color relationship for your color portion of your flower. Now, you can use anything that has color. You could continue to use textures if you want to. You could use some watercolors. Today, I'm gonna to have a go at using these really cool color sticks from Zart, just to show you what happens and how bright and exciting they are. And the color relationship I'm gonna to use today, hmm, I love the primary colors. So I'm just going to use these three colors. And I'm just going to stay within my quarter here. You can see how bright and vibrant these color sticks are. They're like drawing with paint. It's almost like drawing with a lipstick. They're so silky smooth. My primary color section of the flower. So let's turn over and now we're going to have a chat about shapes. Now a shape seems to be a fairly obvious one. We talked about it before with line. A shape is literally just a closed line that connects together. But there are actually two different types of shapes. The type of shapes that you might think of straight away might be the type that you learn about in maths. Geometric shapes like squares triangles, circles, rectangles, they're geometric. But if a shape is just a closed line, that means I could do any type of line, couldn't I? Like this, I'm gonna close that line. Now, 
This wobbly random shape is not a geometric shape. It's not the type of shape that we know. It's called an organic shape. An organic shape is just a shape that might be more so derived from nature, like a leaf, or literally could be just a random line that's closed up like this. So you could either choose to use organic shapes or geometric shapes, or even a bit of both in your shape section. I might have a go at just showing different types of shapes with my thin markers again. And I'm gonna fill my petals with geometric shapes and then I might fill the background with organic shapes. But remember when you're doing shape, you could do shapes inside shapes, do concentric circles, inside circles, inside circles. I might do another one here. And maybe we might notice the difference when using an artwork that has geometric shapes compared to organic ones. Now an artist that loves shape and actually started a movement called Cubism was Pablo Picasso. And he used to create artworks using basic shapes. Don't forget the inside. shapes this is a fun part wobble wobble just remember whenever you create a crazy line to close it otherwise it's not a shape an artist that absolutely loved organic shapes was a man named Henry Matisse and he loved to explore shape in all its form Something I might do just to add a bit of color is I'm just going to use my watercolor paints here to just add a layer of color over the top. That's just what I'm choosing to do. You guys don't have to. There. Shape. All right, the lucky last thing we need to chat about is texture. Texture simply means how something feels or how something looks like it feels. So an artist that loved to use texture in that, their artwork was a man named Vincent van Gogh. He used to apply paint so thickly that it would actually be bumpy. And if you were to touch it, you would be able to feel a texture. It's called impasto painting and he was really good at it. Now, I could do that today to show texture, but I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do something called implied texture. Implied just means that it looks like it has texture, even though it actually doesn't. We're gonna use lines, maybe like this, to make each section within my flower look like it has a different texture. For example, these little lines could look like the fur of a dog or grass. I could use spiky texture. Looks like if I were to touch that, ow, I would hurt myself. So you could think of a whole lot of different textures that you might see within a day and see if you could try to draw them. This is a tricky one. Alternatively, what you could actually do is glue things that actually had texture. For example, you could go down to the beach and get a little bit of sand, put some glue down and stick some actual texture onto your artwork. That'd look pretty cool. So as you can see, line really is probably the most important art uh, element of all because we've actually used lines to create shapes and now we're even using lines to create texture. You can use lines to create tone as well. So line really simply is so important in art. So as you can see here, I've been working away at my implied texture. 
I've done some spiky kind of triangles here. I've done some furry dog hair here. I've done some sort of grains of a wooden tree here. I've done some spikes here as well, like on a cactus. And this is some scales of a fish. So now for my lucky last area here, I might just do some rocks. So there you have it. An art element, artwork exploration. We've got color, line, shape, and texture. enjoyed learning all about the art elements today and putting them into your very own awesome artwork. I'd love to see if you've done this task so please make sure that you tag me at Art Life Art Lessons on Facebook because I'd really love to see what you've done with the task. Art teachers please make sure that you let me know if you've had a go at this task and how it went because I'd love to get some feedback. Hope you have an awesome day and really enjoyed this activity. See you later!